Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. And a special welcome to those joining us via the Catholic Channel on Sirius XM. Today is the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. Our priest celebrant is Father David Gallardo, pastor here at the cathedral. Before we begin our Mass, please take this moment to silence your cell phones and any other electronic device. Thank you. Our opening hymn is number 1029, I Am the Bread of Life. Please stand and sing hymn 1029, I Am the Bread of Life. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we gather this day, we come to celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of the Lord Jesus. It is on this day that we give thanks to the Lord for the gift of his body that nourishes, the nourishment needed in order for us to continue to work, continue his work in the world and the work entrusted to his disciples. As we prepare ourselves then to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, <clears throat> the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie. Jesus 
Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory, the glory of God the Father. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine, and being a priest of God Most High, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, the creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. Oh, Lord. 
Lord has sworn an oath he will not change. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the 12 approached him and said, dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions. For we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, 
Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. Then he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. As we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of the Lord Jesus, I truly believe the most important words we hear today from the Gospel of St. Luke are the words of Jesus to his disciples. Give them some food to eat. Give them some food to eat. They were gathered with Jesus on that day, listening to his words of teaching, witnessing the many times he was healing the infirmed and the sick. And as the day went on, the apostles noticed that the day was getting late. There were over 5,000 individuals gathered around Jesus. They were in a deserted place and provisions were limited. They saw a problem and so they wanted to avoid the problem. That's why they asked Jesus, send the crowd home. We don't have enough to satisfy their hunger. And it's when Jesus said, give them some food to eat. Jesus knew that they had food. In their eyes, the food was limited. But in the eyes and the heart and the mind of Jesus, He knew that the little that they had was more than sufficient to feed the hungry crowd that afternoon. That mandate, those words of Jesus are important for us to hear because we are the modern day disciples. The modern day disciples who come day after day whether it's through our own moments of private individual prayer and devotion, whether it's on a weekday or a Sunday when we gather in our churches to celebrate the Eucharist, we gather because we have a hunger for the Word of God. We have a hunger for a relationship with God, with His Son Jesus, and even with one another. And we know that often in our relationships with God and with one another, there are things that seem to be lacking. There are obstacles and challenges that, allow, that do not allow us at times to recognize that loving spirit of Jesus present in our lives. That's why the Eucharist, The body and blood of the Lord Jesus is such an incredible blessing and gift given to us. Because it's in the Eucharist that we see that ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross, giving his body and his blood so that we could be nourished by his body and blood. So that in that nourishment, we are able to be renewed day in and day out 
in his unconditional love, compassion, generosity, mercy, forgiveness, and all those other attributes that we give to the Lord Jesus and to the Lord our God. In the second reading, as Paul was writing to the faith community in Corinth, he reminded them that what he was giving to them was what he had received from the Lord Jesus. That on the night before he died, he took bread and he blessed it, and he took wine and he blessed it. And that bread and wine became his body and blood. And he then went on to quote those words of Jesus at the Last Supper. As often as you do this, you proclaim my death. That is what we do each and every time we gather around the table of the Lord. We proclaim the death of the Lord Jesus. We proclaim a death freely accepted, a death accepted out of love and compassion for each and every one of us gathered here today. As disciples, we are called to continue to bring that love and that compassion of Jesus into the world today. And we know that that is not always easy. Again, why the Eucharist is such an integral part of our lives as disciples of Jesus. And just as we've accepted the call this morning to gather in this cathedral church to celebrate the Eucharist, and in a few moments to be nourished once again by the body of the Lord Jesus. It's important for us, like St. Paul, to continue not only to proclaim the death of Jesus, but to continue to hand down this incredible gift of God's love to our brothers and sisters. Today, an opportunity for us to pray for our own family members, friends, those who for whatever reason have distanced themselves from the table of the Lord Jesus, those who no longer see the death of the Lord Jesus as a proclamation of love, of generosity and sacrifice, that through our witness of the faith, through our participation and reception of the Eucharist, that they will be renewed in the love of Jesus. So that like Melchizedek in the first reading from Genesis, this great king and priest, he set or brought out bread and wine, blessed it, and offered it as a sacrifice of praise because Abram had returned home safely to his family. He blessed God because this God was a God of love, a God who had truly protected Abram and protected all his children. This great gift of Eucharist is a gift of gratitude, a gift of love, and a gift of life. Today, then, as we celebrate this great mystery of our faith in the depths of our hearts, let us thank the Lord for the gift of his body and blood. Today, an opportunity for us to go back in time and to remember that day when we received the body of Christ for the very first time, the blood of Christ for the very first time. If you're like me, it was a day of great joy. We couldn't wait to finally be able to receive the body of Jesus to finally be able to drink from that cup the blood of Jesus. And we were so excited about making our first Holy Communion. And we probably couldn't wait until the following Sunday to make our second Holy Communion. We were filled with that love and that joy of Jesus. If it's been a while since we've been able to receive the body of Jesus, Perhaps as we go back in time and remember our first communion, God will give us the grace. He will give us the courage 
to make whatever changes need to be made in our lives, to seek whatever perhaps counsel or advice we might be able to receive from a priest, a religious sister, a catechist, and how we can begin once again to come joyfully to the table of the Lord, to proclaim His death, to proclaim His love and His life, not just for us, but for each of our brothers and sisters. God is truly a God of light. Jesus truly the Lord of love and unity. And this day we are called to join them in that life, in that gift of love and unity, so that as we leave this cathedral church in a few moments, we go out into the world once again, and we recognize the hunger in the hearts and the lives of our brothers and sisters. And we accept that invitation of Jesus. Give them something to eat. Let us now stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident of the abiding presence of Christ, we bring our prayers and petitions to the Father. For the Church during the Forward Admission Jubilee year, that fed by Jesus in the Eucharist, we may feed the world in His name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them in embracing sound and moral principles, in solving the issues before them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who doubt the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, that their faith may be strengthened and their hearts may be healed through the grace of the sacrament. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or in need, may the love of Christ comfort them and give them hope in the promise of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and who in this life were nourished by the Eucharist, may they rejoice forever at the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. At this time, I'd invite everyone to be seated, except for all the fathers who are present. If all the fathers, you remain standing. And as we celebrate Father's Day today, we thank the Lord for the gift of each and every one of you here present, 
we also remember our fathers who are now enjoying eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. And we ask the Lord to send as many blessings upon you this day. I invite everyone else present to extend your hands towards our fathers for these words of blessing. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And congratulations and happy Father's Day. You may be seated. As Jesus fed his people with the loaves and fish, we too are called to be a people of charity and love. Let us take a moment to reflect on the blessings received this past week and prepare our gifts. Thank you for your generosity. Our offertory hymn is number 90, Our Blessing Cup, number nine zero. in 
in the presence of God's people. A blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ the que bendecimos es la comunión de la sangre de Cristo. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery, in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the last supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come, the saving memorial of the cross. He offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi et terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom of power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let, it, let us give each other a sign of peace. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion hymn is number 1025. Take and eat, number 1025. I am the lamb that 
that takes away your sin. I am the gate that guards you night and day. You are my flock, you know the shepherd's voice. You are my own, your ransom is my blood. Take and eat, take and eat, this is my body given up for you, take and drink, take and drink, this is my blood given up for you, I am the cornerstone that God has laid, a chosen stone and precious in his eyes, you are God's dwelling place on me, you rest like living stones, a temple for God's praise. Take and eat, take and eat, this is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink, this is my blood given up for you. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for two announcements. First of all, due to the Juneteenth holiday, celebrated tomorrow, Monday, June 20th, daily Mass will be celebrated at 9 a.m. Please note that this will be the only Mass celebrated here at the Cathedral tomorrow. Today, as we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, the Church in the United States launches a three-year Eucharistic revival. Following the 12 noon Mass this afternoon, all are invited to join us for a 0.8-mile Eucharistic procession through the local streets of downtown Los Angeles. The procession will begin and end here at the Cathedral. Please visit the Cathedral website for further information. And at this time, we would like to recognize all who visit the Cathedral this morning for the very first time. So if this is your first visit to the Cathedral, I'd invite you to please stand so we can extend a special welcome to you. And welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you this day and always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, our celebration has ended. 
Let us go in peace. Please join in singing our Salve Regina, which is number 1000 in your hymn book. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules fili heve, a te suspiramus, Gementes et plentes in hoc lacrima rum vale. Ea ergo advocata nostra, ilos tuos misericordes oculos ad nos convete. Eriesum benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. Closing hymn is 1030, Alleluia, sing to Jesus, number 1030. What? 